Hi, I'm Kyle Vanderstoep with NIMS & Associates, and I'm here with you today to talk about managing external file storage in Acumatica. The topics we're gonna to cover today are one, how are files attached to records? Two, how are files persisted in the database normally? And what are the limitations to having the files persist in the database? Three, how can files then be persisted differently using an external file storage provider? and what are the limitations to that file storage provider. And then lastly, I'm gonna go over a demo with how to enable external file storage in your Acumatica instance. First thing, if you aren't familiar, we're gonna go over how files are attached to records in the first place. We are looking here at the locations tab of the customer maintenance screen, and we can see two places where files can be attached. In the top right-hand corner, the file button allows the file to be attached to this master customer record. In the location detail grid, there is a paperclip button that provides the same functionality, but for the detail line. When you press either of the two buttons, the upload file pop-up will appear, providing a familiar browse button. The detail grid below lists all the files that are attached to the record you selected. When no external file storage provider is used, there is a simple relationship between the application and the database. The application requests an attachment and the database looks in the corresponding table, upload file revision where the complete binary data is stored. Here we have an abbreviated view into the upload file revision table in the database. You can see for file 001.jpg, there is an Acumatica generated unique identifier and the binary data is sitting in a separate column. So what are the limitations? The database can get very large because you have an entire file's data in each row of upload file revision. This can really slow down your snapshot creation and restoration. Additionally, if you want to integrate your file attachments with another service, at the time of this video, it is impossible to retrieve more than one file at a time through the web API. This diagram illustrates how external file storage in Acumatica works. Instead of the full binary data being stored in the database, a unique identifier is used as a pointer, where then another call is either made to a cloud storage provider or a local directory on the server. Now you can see the same table I showed before, but after an external file storage provider has been activated. As you can see, the data column has been cleared and this column blob handler now has the second unique identifier that is used to point to the file in the external file storage provider. The one major limitation of an external file storage provider is the possible loss of data consistency. An errant user can easily delete files on the provider. This would lead to the application asking the database for a pointer to a file, and that pointer would lead to nothing. Additionally, separate backups of the file storage provider must be performed since the Acumatica snapshot functionality will only back up the file ID and the blob provider unique identifiers and not the file data itself. So if you think that enabling an external file storage provider is in your best interest, I am going to show you how to now. Here, I'm using the all new 2019 R2 version of Acumatica, and I'm gonna to navigate to system management, system preferences, external file storage. The first thing that I wanna do is choose the type of provider that I wanna use. You can either use Azure or Amazon's blob storage, or you can just use a local file folder on the server. I'm gonna choose the local file folder for the sake of simplicity. Here, I'm gonna set the value to the local file folder that I wanna use. Hit save, and then hit enable provider. If I was using AWS or Azure's blob storage, then I would put in my public key, my secret key, my bucket name, and the path prefix I wanted to use for my files in a similar fashion. Next, I'm gonna hit switch direction. This means that I can now move files that are currently saved in my database out to the external file storage. The checkbox allow saving files indicates this. Hitting the move files to storage button will run a process that actually takes the binary data that is currently being stored in upload file revision 
and moves it out of the database. Now, if I go to my local folder that I specified here, you can see the files being saved to the directory. At some point in time, if I wanna move all my files back into the database, perhaps so that they're captured by a snapshot, I can press the switch directions button and then the move files to database button. And now the files are moving from my local folder back into the database. You can see now that my local folder is empty and all my files are back in the database. There's not a whole lot to show in this demo. There's not a lot of visual excitement, but there is a lot of stuff happening in the back end. Anyway, that is all when it comes to managing external file storage in Acumatica. Okay, so to wrap it up, we talked about how files are attached to records in Acumatica. We talked about how files are normally saved in the upload file revision table in the database. We talked about how we can enable a file storage provider to take that large chunk of data out of the database and store it in a different location and the limitations between storing the file data in the database versus in the file storage provider. And lastly, I showed you how to enable and disable external file storage in Acumatica. If you're interested in more Acumatica snapshot videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel and our LinkedIn user group. Additionally, you can contact NIMS and Associates for any questions about Acumatica Cloud ERP.